All right, for better or for worse, we're going to do Legend of the Five Rings as an online role-playing game. So this online campaign, uh, it's nothing overly special. We're just going to play out some games and see how it turns out. So I will have credits at the end of this video and every other video technically, but still at the end of the video showing who owns what, but still that's just to avoid any legal BS. In a world where people are trying to codify things down so everything absolutely must be done the way it is from the home company, the purpose of the RPG is to make a game and then pass it to the fans. And the fans can do what they want to with that game. As the original TSR slogan was products of your imagination. So be it. That's what we're doing here. We're going to go ahead and do a Legend of the Five Rings campaign. Session zero is going to be at the end of this video, so you don't have long to wait. Now, it's going to be kind of funny because it's going to be a, a whole new campaign continuity. Technically, it's based off of the original canon. So right now, uh, Fantasy Flight Games and Ed Studios and Asmodee Corporation are the owners of Legend of Five Rings. We're going to be using the AEG continuity to play this game, and that's just because it's the last big full stretch of canon we have and it went to an end it ended in 1200 any old events you know from the previous l5r games is just a historical event at this time period so we're going to do something very strange in that we're going to run first edition why first edition fifth edition is what's out in stores right now the edition that everybody really wants is this one fourth edition well this is an expensive book to buy the least I've seen a 4th edition book go for, on average, is about $100. If you see it for less than $100, buy it if you want it. But let me tell you something. Since I'm running a campaign here, two things are going to happen. People are either going to ignore it or they're going to want to buy some L5R. And if you want to buy some L5R or crack it open again, if you have 4th edition, great. You can run a 4th edition campaign with the same materials. But... This is kind of, this is the garbage edition that's available everywhere. I mean, you can find copies of this version of Legend of the Five Rings on eBay and in local stores if you can find it for relatively cheap. So this is not a super high priced edition. And we're the Dead Games channel, so we're going to go with the Dead Game. The Living Game is still available through Fantasy Flight Games, and if their stock runs out, Edge Studios will be releasing that. I don't know if Edge Studios is going to be printing stuff, or if it's just print on demand. Still, Legend of the Five Rings first edition is what we're using as the foundation of our game. Like I've said before, the last canon event in AEG's continuity was 1200. Everything happened before that is history. In the year 1268, it's been 68 years since that date. What was the last thing that happened in the canon of L5R? <laughs> um, the Spider Clan took over. The Scorpion Clan and the Crane Clan had a political alliance going on to try to stop the Spider Clan, and they failed. And the last thing we knew, you, you can see it on like the wikis and stuff, Rokugan was overrun by Shadowlands creatures, and the Spider Clan ruled for decades, ushering in the actual Thousand Years of Darkness, I would assume. However, this is Rokugan. The people of Rokugan are not known for sitting still and taking that. They fight wars against each other all the time. And so what's going to happen is we're going to be running a campaign. I'll have the full, I'll have a full back history video in the future just to make things simple, where it's going to be a BS video talking about the back history. But this new campaign setting for L5R is based on the original canon. And in 1268, the Spider Clan no longer rules Rokugan, and Rokugan is suffering and rebuilding and trying to get back to where they used to be. As a result, a lot has changed about Rokugan because you don't destroy the Shadowlands several multiple times in your nation's history and come out of it smelling like flowers. What's going to happen is there's a lot of terrible things rising in Rokugan, but the player characters to start with as first level characters are going to go up to Phoenix Clan territory and they're going to hang out there and we're going to do a hex crawl in Phoenix Clan territory. L5R plays differently than most other RPGs. It's more of a social game. There's political aspects, but there's a lot of interesting fun little shenanigans that happen it's funny that L5R is kind of a slice of life game when you stop and think about it. But we will have action, we will have adventure, and the first session, session zero is, is at the end of this video, it's coming up here soon. But most of the sessions to start with might be a little bit on the soft side, and then things will pick up from there. We'll see how it goes. 
But yeah, that's my idea. It's just to run an online campaign, see how it turns out. It's harder than I expected, to tell you this much. But still, I don't have all the time in the world. So let's go ahead and get to session zero. And we will see exactly how Rokugan plays out in the year 1268. All right, Rokugan in the year 1268 is actually in kind of a period of peace. It is the late middle of fall. You know, I forgot which month it is, but it's like the it's like the in the bottom weeks of the second month. And Rokugani months tend to be a flat 28 days. It's a weird thing, but the planet's different than ours. It works out that they have 28 days in I think it is a 12 month calendar just like ours. It's kind of a partially cloudy day just coming off of rain. Plenty of colored trees. There's, there's a bit of fallen leaves going on. But in the West Hub Village, near the capital delta of Rokugan, a long time ago, a place simply named Odosanuchi was the capital of Rokugan. And in, in the delta region, it was kind of a natural bay that formed there. One of the surrounding villages to the west was called West Hub Village. What do you know? But it's kind of a small city with uh, three different major roads cutting through it and a bunch of different small side roads. Holds about, I think about 10,000 people live in that West Hub village without counting travelers. And there's plenty of travelers. It's got standard stone walls that reach up about 12 feet high. It's more broad than tall. The watchtowers that are along the uh, edge of, of the walls are your standard Rokugani white with blue tiling on the, uh, on the roofs. The gates is a natural rosewood that they've uh, input, and they're pretty old and weathered. The gates are usually open, and they're usually guarded by a small squad of samurai at all times. The West Hub Village is located on a plain, and it is surrounded by fields. West Hub Village is a pretty interesting uh, city. The main row has a small, like, three-story building dedicated to, like, the Crane Clan when they arrive, and that one points from the south. Pointing from the west, when you enter, like, a west gate, there's, like, a three-story building that the Lion Clan typically uh, to. Much like every other building in the West Hub Village, most of them are tiled blue. The streets aren't particularly busy after the rain. Most people are staying in, and you'll find people that are like quickly moving off to the side. Everybody has traveling papers. Amatsuichi, your traveling papers pretty much just state that you are a samurai on business. That depends. Do you still have, was your, were your old papers taken from you, and did you have to get new ones? Hmm. I may... Are your original clan papers the ones you have? Or did uh, do you think you'll need to make new ones? Because you can get new ones here. I don't think they would... I think I would need new ones. Because I think that being... With one of my disadvantages, I don't think that my clan... Any clan papers would be particularly... Valid. valid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't worry. We, we, we... Yeah, I wouldn't be using them because I wouldn't want to be under a false pretense. Okay. If my clan has made it clear that they don't want to help me, then I won't go around them and use their name in... Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. I think you've got the Koku for it, but the, you'll probably have to pay like um, half a Koku to get official papers mm -hmm. made. And you can get them made in the West Hub City. It's actually one of the better places to get them. The magistrate's office actually has several scribes attached to it with their own uh, chalk stamps and notary. And how you get travel papers made in Rokugan is you pretty much declare which regions you're going to be going through. You declare you know, your name and essentially where you come from and what you're planning on doing. And one of the pe travel papers gets kept with the city and the other one gets issued to you. It's folded over six times. If you've seen the old Tokugawa era Tegatas, it pretty much looks just like that. And so the so travel papers would be oof, fairly expensive then if I have to get, get them over and over again traveling from place to place, right? Oh, they can get expensive. What can happen is someone gets them for you. <laughs> It's very plausible that if a lord comes through and has his retinue, the lord is not going to have every last person in his retinue present their traveling papers at once when they arrive. That's something the diplomats and the scribes take care of. So there's a very big possibility that if there's someone that can speak for you, you won't have to worry about traveling papers through a region. Are there regions where travel papers aren't as significant? Because I imagine... This territory is fairly contested, so travel papers are fairly significant. Right now, the two worst places to go to as far as traveling papers are concerned is Lion Clan territory and Scorpion Clan territory, because those two clans are right now at the most martial stances. All right. And I'm just traveling. I don't have any particular business anywhere, right? 
Yeah, um, you're just you're just on walkabout, so to speak. So I probably want to plan a destination somewhere north. That way, I have the papers through the parts of Rokugan that will matter the most, and then yeah. Well, you know what the fun thing is? Yeah. As far as traveling papers are concerned, they can pretty much get you papers that give you a pass to the capital. The capital tends to be kept very safe. And sending some random run into the capital is kind of a nice way to keep them in check, really. That's not going to cost you anything extra. They're not going to put any special stamps on your papers. They'll at least let you get these stamps that will allow you to, you know, essentially walk in the door and perform trade. That's actually not a bad, like, starting direction for my plans. Yeah. Um at least from there, I can get more papers if I need to leave or yeah. go go further north. I'll have I'll basically have papers saying that that's the direction I'll be going. Yeah, for trading purposes. Yeah, I imagine there are definitely are going to be people selling swords and and weapon crafts that I could t learn more about. Yeah, where they came from. In Rokugan, every clan has a swordsmiths. Two of the most renowned swordsmiths are, of course, the Kakita swordsmiths and the Kaiyu swordsmiths. But down from that. There are some swordsmiths in the capital that are pretty amazing. You can't really pass up the Dragon Clan swordsmiths. For some reason, the Dragon Clan tends to universally be really good at making swords. I mean, they're not known as the best, but they make a butt ton of special swords. Mm. I ultimately like to visit the Caillou. There is definitely a tension in the region yeah. between that between here and there. And my correspondence. I, I, well, is my, my main reason for eventually visiting. It's probably better to get a little bit more knowledge about other clans and their techniques before yeah. uh, collaborating. With one them. thing that you do know is that one of the more recent letters you've received from your contact in Kuni lands, did we give him a name yet or did we not? Not yet. The Caillou or the Kuni? It was the Caillou, right? yeah. Kuni is uh, the, the witch hunter it's types. The Caillou yeah. are, the, are the engineers. Do you yeah. have it written down as Kuni? You're right. It, it is the Caillou, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, why is it written down as Cooney? I think it was just a... If you don't have a name for it, I have a name for him. Misname. Okay. Uh, what is it? Uh, Caillou Sawaro. He is not especially high up in the ranks of the Caillou, but he is dedicated to his craft. When you've met Sawaro... Wait, were you planning on having known the guy longer? I'm sorry. I think I've known them a little longer. The correspondence has been... Wait. How old is your character right now? Would be fairly young. Uh, early 20s. Early 20s. Early 20s is actually considered a fully adult in this setting. Fully adult, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 16, 17, 18, and 19 are your fairly young for uh, being an adult. So, okay. So current age is turning 20s, or turning it, going into the 20s. Okay. Or maybe 19, because it's that transition between... Uh, it was as I was going to an adult where the like I started stating my position. Okay. It's just the expectation of what Matsuichi should be doing versus what he was interested in. Yes. What we're going to go with is... In, it was 1264. It was actually a good solid like three and a half years ago in the winter court. Because, yeah, no, winter's in the bottom of a Ghana year. Their calendar wraps differently than ours. Their calendar technically ends in February, so to speak. This was just after the public complaint of Matsusane. There was a lot of whispering and stuff going on. He was looking to essentially keep away from the, the real rattle and rustle. The fact that both of you guys are kind of trying to keep away from the, the center of all the hubbulu. This is still in the winter court of the Daidoji castle. You guys actually traded a few ideas. All right. He is also a metal worker. He likes to uh, work with high stress, high tensile metal, and he loves working with steel. Mm -hmm. The last letter you got from uh, Kayu Sawaro, he had mentioned that he was thinking about leaving Crablands for a winter court again and was wondering exactly if you had a good idea of where to go. So that was the last letter you got. He's, he, he's basically deciding where to go for winter court. Yeah, well, he's got the correspondence traits, so he might right. as well use it. Yeah. I mean, let's see. I mean, the concept of does the capital hold winter court too? Yes. The capital winter court is not always the most prestigious one, but it's typically is the most legalistic. Pretty much all of the high court members, they're like judges or lawmakers. They're the kind of people who pretty much do a lot of scribing and stamping and official recording of dates. The winter court Toshi Ranbo tends to be a historian's and a scribe's festival. All the really nice, crunchy, dry stuff that politically minded people like munching over. As far as place to hold the winter court right now, don't worry, your character's probably in a little bit of a flux where they're not quite sure where they want to go. I mean, I'm, I would like to return a reply with suggestions. Winter Court at the Capitol would allow a hopeful, court, like, you know, interaction with 
various merchants that would allow us to find sort you know uh, unusual metalwork techniques at Toshi Rando, if it's an academic winter court, it would allow for interactions with academics about historical uses or historical techniques of not just sword work, but also uh, metalwork for construction. And, mm -hmm. and I mean, that could work out. Possibly. One thing you might want to think about doing, I don't know what your character's thinking about, but when you're at the notary, it's very plain wooden walls. The desk is high quality, but it's, you know, designed to be, you know, used as a work surf. And there are people who are working the new, uh, the travel papers for you. You're kind of like starting out the process and you have yet to actually have the papers made. It's probably a good idea to ask people if there's someone who knows about which winter courts are happening where, essentially, and what's going on. Because knowing about which winter courts do what is not common knowledge. You've got to kind of be in the loop to see who's doing what, where, for how much. In the in the room presently, there's two Lion Clan samurai. They're kind of whispering to each other, kind of like doing small personal business off to one side. And waiting on of one of them is a samurai clad in black with a yellow belt. On the opposite side of the room, there is a low-ranking Crane Clan courtier. No one you recognize, <laughs> thank God. They are speaking with someone who looks to be an unmarked, like they're just some random samurai woman. She looks like she's trying to not stand out, despite the fact a lot of Crane Clan personalities try to stand out and look their absolute best. So she looks relatively plain for a Crane Clan woman. There are also a few other scribes and workers tussling back on the opposite side of the table. The master scribe is doing something else. And so he's letting one of his journeymen handle the processes of making papers for today. And he's just finishing up papers for the, the Crane Clan girl. And she's going to be leaving here relatively shortly. So you've got people you can talk to. The, the Lion Clan samurai don't look like soldiers. They look like officers. And the courtiers, well, they do courtier stuff. Sending who I would approach. There's a Crane Clan samurai talking with a unaligned, or a Crane Clan courtier. Crane Clan courtier type, as in she's not mm -hmm. carrying like open swords. You know, you're allowed yep. to carry swords everywhere if you're a samurai. She has like a fan in her hand, essentially. And she's like, she's not like fanning herself because it's, you know, yep. uh, it's, you know, fall. But she's motioning with her, with her fan. The unaligned samurai is just dressed in like gray stripes on one side and greenish stripes on the other one. You know, just a standard kimono. They've got like a, a deep red belt, black hair on this girl. She's kind of average looking too. And she's probably in her like middle 20s, whereas the courtier type is young, as in she's probably just recently graduated. Right. I do want to glean information about the interests of the Crane clan, but I think I'll have that to be a latter discussion. Like after I figure out, let's. I'll. I'm going to ask the lion court officers. I don't, I'll probably be fairly straightforward. Just ask them about less gossipy, less political winter courts. Things that are just more straightforward, more about uh, crafting, more about craft of the of weapon craft. Actually, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Well, typically, I'm more interested in smithing, like smith work, like figuring out like the yeah. direction of weapon craft in this climate would be of interest. Well, one of the Lion Clan officers, they both have rather dour, stoic looks on their faces just because they're samurai, right? One of the Lion Clan officers turns to one of the other one and says, well, the nice thing about being a smith is generally you can avoid the winter courts. There's a bit of a chuckle between the two of them, but then he turns back respectively and says, as far as winter courts that support a craft in general, that's really esoteric knowledge. If I had to guess, I would say the Agasha amongst the phoenix they used to be dragon i guess if you could go into the dragon's courts as well their winter courts would definitely be more open to discussing matters that would be considered mundane by those of political import very likely that those winter courts would be the ones that would suit the tastes better the other officer then turns over and says here that there's actually three different interesting tournaments being lauded at some at these winter courts the morning glory castle is having a go tournament there is a soft kendo tournament, Shanai only. They're holding that at the, uh, the City of the Rich Frog of all things. I believe the Unicorn Clan are actually hosting one. Strangely enough, I have heard that a tournament in the Dragonfly Castle on the borders, they're holding a tournament of archery. Have you noticed any small detail I passed out about the setting? Oh, the, about this little room they're in? About the room itself? Nothing that particularly catches my interest. But there are two tournaments that it did catch my interest. You know who the, the, the black-clad samurai with the yellow belt is, right? Are you talking about... I'm guessing it, it's our friend here, right? Yes. You're there in that room. 
You hear them talking about it. Well, I am not in a position to interrupt the samurai that I am hanging out with. It's the whole speak when spoken to thing. Ah, excellent. I'm going to pass it to you, even though it would be a roll to get past something this subtle. Uh, Matsuichi notices that the messenger has his eyes light up a little bit when they mention the other two tournaments, the Go Tournament and then the Tournament of Archery. It's one of those things where, strangely enough, does your character probably... How well studied is he in, like, actual clan geography? I'm wondering what your take on the character was. Let's see. His interests are more artistic, not as much tactical. So if it's for geography, it'd be mostly interested in, in sites of theological importance or things of, like, historical. If it's about battlefields, his interest wanes. If it's about a legend of sword, like, a, of a particular sword, then he might know something about it. Here's, a, here's something. If there are sites of engineering works like you know forts of interest he has a little bit of knowledge of that too but this you know you know where the phoenix lands are they mentioned that the agasha were pretty much the primary crafter types so heading in that direction sounds a lot better than heading anywhere else Although, you probably have to reference a map to make sure you know where, like, the Dragonfly Castle was. A lot of castles in Rokugan conveniently have the family name attached to the castles. <laughs> so, you kind of can guess where it is. Like, mm -hmm. Miramoto Castle in Dragonlands. But where's the Dragonfly Castle? You know, that kind of stuff is... So, your character isn't homing in, but he's got an idea, generally. When is Winter Court beginning? Winter Court will begin in two months. And the journey to Agasha... Will probably take half a month. Okay, yeah, because it's it's on the coast. There it is. It's up north a little, yeah. Unfortunately, I have to decide if I'm going to the east side of the mountain or the west side. Otherwise, I'd have to track across. That one road that goes through the mountains is a pain in the butt. This is a very basic map. There are smaller roads that lead off of this. But one of the best ways to get to the Agasha lands is to go through the castle. The, Imperial, the Emerald Champions Road leads from North Hub Village all the way up to Honored Tree City and the capital. You can probably hook a right there and find yourself towards Kyud Nagasha without too much of a problem. I'm going to be stuck on this decision. Uh, well, no, I'm getting my papers drafted now for yeah. location and destination. It still seems like the capital is the most flexible point for the papers to go to. Yeah. So I'm going to have it written to go there. Drafting? Um, like that way... Go ahead. I can get a second set of papers afterwards to go to another location now. Unless you can, if you can find someone who, who can speak on your behalf and bring you across the borders. So we have papers being drafted up for uh, Matsuichi, which is interesting because you it has like a very blank, plain imperial seal. It's the kind that they pass out to a basic citizen of Rokugan. If a peasant wanted to get traveling papers drafted up, this would be stamped on their traveling papers too. Do take a moment to just stare at the seal because it's still unsettling. Yeah. But do people usually travel that far away to... Okay, first of all, in Rokugan, it jumps up and down the scale. Pe there are people who pretty much stay in their region. There are people who pretty much just do their thing hmm. in their region. However, I can guarantee you that the most rich and affluent of the people in Rokugan have zero problem with traveling across the entire damned map to go to Winter Court. Uh, which one is... The Dragonfly Castle? Is it up north? Yeah, Kyuden Tonbo. Dragonfly Clan Palace is its north in Dragon Clan territory. Yeah, my letter is going to discuss Winter Courts basically in Phoenix Land and then Kyuden Tonbo. Is that west side? It actually be, should be farther, farther down than that. But then again, that's another fun thing about Rokugan is not all maps are accurate. <laughs> you know what the funny thing is? Is that to draft your letter... There's no place that's like really private and personal unless you want to like pay for like an in room. The problem with being a Ronin is there's no place you can just walk into and just sit down at a table, you know, as, as a samurai. Like there's an inn or a place to eat. You can sit down and draft your letter at an actual eating table. That can be done. I will have to do that then. For then, since I am in the room and, and discussing uh, winter courts, I yeah. will approach the Crane Clan and the. It's a Crane Clan courtier and a, a clanless one right well unmarked unmarked nothing okay. stops a samurai from wearing whatever clothes they want to however typically okay. they wear the colors of their clan she's just calmly talking with the other samurai she wasn't paying much attention to you until you decided to step up uh, oh greetings i was just curious about your disposition on winter court 
Oh, excuse me. Well, in terms of Winter Court, which one? There's a Winter Court is held at uh, each of the major castles. The mine interests were pertaining to the crafting of swords. Well, of course, the greatest craftsmen in all of the Empire, they are in the, the castles of the Kakita. And you're not far from there. I stay very stoic, but I don't disagree. The other Crane Clan girl doesn't really react to that much. But if you know somebody, usually planning to meet someone at Winter Court is always better than just going out alone. The older woman then uh, kind of pipes along and says, yes, that's, al that's always good uh, advice, to meet up with friends. The other uh, samurai don't jump into the conversation. It's, you've got the papers crafted. You've got it taken care of. You have your bid to leave the, uh, the notary and go where you wish to. There's no rain right now. The road is a little bit muddy, so getting out of the road is a good idea. There appears to be several choices of eating establishments. Two of them look absolutely posh. A little bit farther back down towards the gate, closer to where like a peasant might go, but still not so far away that it, it's like a wrong place to go, you might say. There looks to be a very simple uh, two-story building with, with black tile on the uh, top of the roof, and it has a red phoenix on the sign. The streets are still a little bit empty, but there are, you know, people going about their business. My priority would be finding a, the establishment that seems the most relaxed or quiet. By the way, I did describe a, a red phoenix flag, not a red phoenix mod. So it's not the clan in specific. Yeah, uh, that would have my guess, yeah. I will place an order for a little bit of food. Not a lot, just to cook me oh, on yeah. and then uh, set up my equipment on a table. In the well, when it comes to places to eat, Orochi probably does not feel like breaking the bank. I don't know if you're into like chicken or fish or, you know, chopped vegetables, but you're thinking just some sauce and rice with some basic additives would sound good for getting the uh, hunger out of the way. Pretty much. It so happens that you, you notice that the guy you saw at the notary earlier is alone at a table here at this place. And so it's, it's a nice wide table where if you sat down at it, there would be an extra space between you and him on the table. A lot of these tables in Rokugan are designed so that you can reach out into the center and put a hot pot in the center. But of course, there's no hot pot there. They usually just leave the stone slab, and the stone slab makes a great divider between everybody's place at the table anyway. So you must be the swordsmith that's been asking around all the winter cards. Uh, Yeah, that, that would be me. I'm pulling out calligraphy materials to, to draft my letter just while having this conversation i i've barely even touched food actually i'll assume you probably killed off the food and someone has taken away your plate rokugan has no problem with having you sit down at a table in fact sometimes guys will eat have their have their plates taken away and then sit down and talk for like two or three hours that's just rokugan <laughs> uh you have an interest in winter court currently it is a secondary to what my current objectives are <laughs> It's usually a good idea if you want to start on good relations, is to make official introductions with each mm. other. Watashi Suruchi Orochi. Uh, I am Matsuichi. You guys have made your bows, assuming Orochi takes a seat. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sitting down to eat, so... You're on one side where no one else is bugging you, so if you guys want to converse relatively freely, you guys can. Um, one thing that happens in Rokugan, there's a lot of reading the room where if there's a lot of people there. You don't do things that disrupt what generally people in the room are doing. Uh, do I recognize the surname? Is it Suruchi? Is the surname? Yeah, Suruchi, yeah. Okay, and that's, um, sorry, which clan? Uh, Mantis right now. Which, from what, I've, what I'm aware, has no particular... Yeah, Mantis aren't particularly aligned. They fought the crane recently. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't matter to me much. Their most recent fights... Uh, Go ahead. It was the, was it the beach one? The... They had a bit of a battle at the beach, and it had begun with an interesting beach party. It was that. Okay, the beach party. <laughs> I suppose you heard my interest in the Agasha Winter Court. Indeed I did. One thing you guys both know about the Agasha, the Agasha used to be a Dragon Clan family, that because of horrible things that happened in Dragon Clan history, they left the Dragon Clan and went and joined the Phoenix. Doing so actually struck a great blow to the Dragon Clan, though most families in Rokugan don't pay attention to them. They're, they're one of the more industrious families of Rokugan. Have you traveled up that far north? <laughs> I do not believe so. Mm. And the Winter Court in Kyuden Tonbo. Kyuden Tonbo is the Dragonfly Palace. Ah. Any interest there? What court was going on there again? They were going to be holding a, a general winter court, but there was going to be an, an archery tournament that was going to be held there. So he's asking me about that one, so... Yeah. 
It would definitely be nice to show off my clan's prowess in the field of archery, but it may have to wait for another year. And they have an archery tournament there. That brings up some questions. Winter Courts is a good opportunity to explore. I mean, pursuing your interests is within your... You are not incorrect, but there are things that are more pressing for me to attend to now than mere flights of fancy. Quite a long mission if it's going to take two months or longer than two months to follow through. If I am lucky, that's all it will be. And then you can look forward to an archery tournament? Uh, I do not know if I can look forward to anything at the moment. I am going to be busy. Well, seems like business is all you have to look forward to. What other interests do you have otherwise? I mean, other than archery, of course. I am a very proficient Go player. Hmm. I can't say I've had a taste for it, particularly myself. It's, um... A lot of white stones, right? <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of white stones? <laughs> Two. <laughs> I, I have a I've I've played a few games with my family, but unfortunately, um, never had a talent for it. That is regrettable. <laughs> How's Matt Switch going to take that? Are you a samurai? Like... No. Um, hmm. Well, I guess I could play a game. I mean, it's always nice to warm up every once in a while. Maybe make sure that I remember the rules correctly. Do they have a go board here? No. This restaurant is primarily for people who want to eat. If you had gotten to one of the wealthier restaurants or inns, you could have uh, potentially rounded up a go board, potentially. The question is, um, w would I have a go board with me, even if it's just like a little rollout cloth version? You know what? You had a pretty set outfit because of who you are. Unfortunately, you do not. You're, you are pretty set in what you have, and you don't have attached a go board. Now you do actually have a like a scroll you have more like a small book that has the some notations on strategy in general, which does include some go notes, but it's not generally you know something you could use in a go game. Besides, also if you have strategy notes, you don't bring those to the table when you're playing. Most Rokugani see it as cheating. <laughs> oh, believe me, I don't. Is there a like a go house around here nearby or? You know what? Mm -hmm. You don't know this city very well. You do know. <laughs> guess who another uh, proficient Go player is that you know rather well? One of my um, correspondents, I'm guessing. Uh, a certain Lion Clan lord who has uh, decided to put Poku <laughs> in his pocket. Well, he plays Go. He, in fact, he has two different Go sets. There's one on the third floor and there's one on the ground floor. You like the one on the ground floor because it's kind of rustic looking. But the one on the uh, third floor does play really well. Well, if it is all right with him, I will invite my guests over to have a, a round. The good news is that would be really cool. The bad news is this is going to take a bit. <laughs> that requires traveling from West Hub Village through some northern roads across into Lion Clan territory and back down to the city you came from with the respondent message. Okay, so back to square one, basically. Uh, back to square zero, actually. But uh, it's, a, it's a good square to go through. You are on quite the, uh, the errand right now. It's going to be about three days on a good pace to get there, assuming good weather, and four or five days on a bad pace. If you get rain, you're, it sucks. But if you have good weather, you can make it there in three days. Or you can go straight through Crane Clan territory, which is probably not the best idea. Well, considering who I'm aligned with, yeah, no. Cool. Sorochi, did you feel like inviting this, this new Ronin you've met to travel along with you on your way back to the Kitsu Keep? It, it seems like a good idea to me. It's always good mm -hmm. to have more company on the road, and where he's an artisan, he may need the protection as well. Does Matsuichi openly pack his swords, or does he keep them in somewhat concealment? The Daisho, he keeps... He does have in, in the open. Yeah, he is a samurai. Yeah, the other two swords are a little more packed and yeah. like wrapped cloth and ready for travel. You're, in the future, you're probably thinking about getting a, a nice carry box for the swords. One thing that is replete through Japanese history is whenever you find a fine quality sword, there is a box that that fine quality sword goes in. It's probably why the two swords are in poor quality. Mm. <laughs> They'll need some serious buffing. Out. Yep. By the way, Orochi, I didn't mention it earlier, but you didn't come here alone in the first place. Two of Ashigaru that work with the, the Kitsu Lord, they came along with you. They're set for both bull and spear, so you're you're doing fine as far as um, having numbers. So it wasn't just you going alone. It's still better to travel in a group, though. A, traveling by yourself, even as a samurai, is still a dangerous thing. I have come to learn that, yes. 
Oh, I'm hmm. not saying for me going alone. I'm talking about the swordsmith. Ah, absolutely. So he can join your party. It's I'm not looking out for myself. I'm trying to look out for the other guy. You guys secure some food for the road, and you probably can secure... Don't even worry about paying for it. The Lion Clan is willing to let Orochi bunk up for the night. You're already ha providing bunks for the uh, two Ashigaru as well. And fitting in a third or f a fourth or fifth person is not going to be a mm. trouble. The room that is, is being stayed in for the night could probably easily fit eight. Um, they just don't have anybody in right now. That and I'm trying to... There's a, a spirit... Sorry. Go ahead. That and I'm trying to spend as little as my surrogate lord's money as possible. <laughs> you know what? Do either of you guys have a, have a D10 sitting next to you? It, not immediately, but I can get one quick enough. I do. Matsuichi has won the contest. You may roll a D10 and tell me the number you get. 10. It is a 10? It's a 10, yeah. Zero. Um, I just wanted to see which uh, number it was. It don't cause Usually in this game system, we explode 10s. However, I just want to number one through zero. Uh, Funny enough, as you uh, travel along that road, an interesting portent happens. There are clouds for storms moving in, and there are clouds for storms to the north and to the south, and there are the storm clouds I described at the beginning. But as you're traveling along the road, the storm clouds kind of keep to each of your corners, and as you're walking along, I mean, you see the rain fall over the hub villages, you know, a day out. But you actually have sunny weather directly overhead and on all four corners around you the storm clouds are gathering that's odd it's like there's eh, there's like an omen hanging over the cities or something it's kind of interesting looking and there's very little that happens in the world that looks like this as you're on the road you see a lot of the peasants have been putting tarps and tamping down and there's a lot of work being done off on the sides of the road as you're traveling along but it's actually a relatively uh, nice, easy go from the West Hub Village up to the Lion Clan border. In the Lion Clan border, weirdly enough, there's no border guard presently there. You do come across four horsemen, just samurai guys on horseback wearing lion colors. They do kind of do the papers, please. But when they see uh, the papers that Orochi's carrying, mm. they essentially are like, ah, carry on. And they don't give either of you guys any mind. That's nice. Traveling through Lion Clan territory means usually you'll run across some kind of patrol at least once a day. It's kind of funny because you're going on the outskirts of that one forest. So it has a lot of interesting views because as you're walking along the road, you have to the one side normal farmland. But there are the colors of fall sitting off to your uh, left side as you're walking along there. Of course, you have a clear line of sight of the sunset as you're walking along two days straight. After that... You see, the, the fun thing about the Kitsu holding is there's kind of a little bit of a foothill that comes out of that forested area. And the foothill kind of is like a ridge, and then the ridge has a point at one point, but on the other point, it levels out into the, uh, the fields behind mm -hmm. it. There's just this one little point, and it's at the very tip of that point where the Kitsu's keep was built. So it's a little bit higher off land than the farmland. So the, the foothill that it's posted on is a pretty much a good, like, you know, 30 or 40 feet high. Rocky, no woods there. The woods are all behind the castle. And it's a very small keep. The first story is pretty much a standard 15 foot tall, you know, stone wall. Relatively tight fit. A lot of Rokugani castles don't have very tight fit on their, their stonework. And even like ivy and plants can grow on it. Not this one. It's relatively well kept. And then, of course, the actual second floor looks like the first floor because it's just that one level, you know. And then, of course, there's the one, it's closest to the edge. But there's that one, the third floor. And the third floor has lights in it when you guys arrive. Your arrival time is evening. You arrive just at sunset. And it's a relatively dark sunset. A very thin red line that shows off the mountains in the distance. And they're, they are quite distant. And once you get to the keep, the storm clouds have dominated the sky again. So I didn't mention if you were given horses or not. There is a village that is underneath and to one side of the, uh, the Kitsu keep. We haven't covered whether or not they have horses or not. So you, this may have been, this may have been a horseback. This may have been on foot. Either way. I have a steed, so. You have a steed? I do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Horseback is good then. So <laughs> we're good for that. We'll say there, there's at least three horses there. How's that? Mm -hmm. <laughs>
So when you get to the keep, actually, there is a place for you to have your horse kept. They'll actually, they'll, they'll provide food for your horse as a guest. Do you make sure that... Well, you've got that, that interesting thing where since you are a ronin, you will be excluded from a great deal of things. So the fact that someone was willing to essentially pick you up and drag you along. One thing that was probably not said by Orochi, but he was probably thinking of it, is like, this guy has heavy interest in swordsmithing. Gee... Who is someone who is not going to turn a swordsmith away? <laughs> hey, it's like, hey, my current overlords, here's a present. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just a, a really minor thing we were doing. We'll go ahead and end it here so that we can actually have all players mm -hmm. present for the uh, trip mm -hmm. to the Winter Court. Um, I do make sure that uh, the letter uh, that I wrote back in yeah. the village says that I, even though like I'm considering these two, the, mm -hmm. the different winter courts up north, I'm naturally, of course, heading south into yeah. lion territory. Actually, kind of, kind of <laughs> west, but the good news is, is that <laughs> oh, yeah. the most prominent southward road goes through this area. Mm -hmm. So, you're good. Yeah. Don't worry. Everything is fine. Yeah. Anything else to keep? Go ahead. Yeah, no, that's yeah. it. There is no difficulty this session, so I, instead of any kind of experience points, I am going to Give you guys travel papers for free, so don't worry about paying for travel papers. There will be ways to uh, recount the money in the time between now and the next session. You two guys will get the achievement played session zero. <laughs> Ooh, achievement session zero. <laughs> Yay. So you guys have that achievement. For a rather boring drab session, any commentary? Mm -hmm. Nope. It's just us trying to find our place in the game at this point. Yeah, just finding, uh, getting used to the system and seeing how it goes. It is, it is amusing that I am in the middle of Lion Clan territory now. Probably one of the last places I plan to visit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. So cool. Thank you guys for coming along, even though it was, you know, like the most basic of sessions. I'm, I'm very rusty. I haven't GM'd in... I haven't GM'd in 10 years. 